Hunting at its core has always been about the harvest of animals for the purpose of eating. A quick search on Google for wild game recipes can yield millions of results for any animal you could think of. From venison backstraps and elk steaks to frog legs and even groundhog chili, if you are feeling adventurous, you can fry, bake, grill, and boil pretty much any wild game species that you can legally harvest. In the outdoor world today, there is one name that instantly comes to everyone's mind when thinking of trying a new recipe for that old rutted up buck you shot last fall. Steve Ranella was born in the Michigan town of Twin Lake in February 1974 to Rosemary Johnson and Frank Ranella. Steve is the youngest of three boys, Daniel and Matthew Ranella. Growing up in rural Michigan, Ranella and his two brothers spent as much time as they could outdoors. His father, a World War II veteran that grew up in the south side of Chicago, introduced the three boys to hunting and fishing at a young age. Frank Ranella never hunted in his youth though, being raised by his grandparents in Chicago, but came into the sport after returning from World War II, along with a whole generation of soldiers who learned how to shoot and camp during the war. In high school, Ranella knew he wanted to make a living hunting and fishing. He and his older brother seemed to spend every non-school hour hunting, fishing, or trapping in the woods and rivers of Twin Lake, Michigan. Steve actually earned his spending money as a teen, trapping muskrats and foxes for their pelts. His older brothers both pursued wildlife biology, eventually earning PhDs and jobs with the government and ecology, while he considered earning a living as a trapper and even flirted with joining the army. Ranella, however, in the end ended up attending Grand Valley State University to study English and creative writing. After he earned his undergraduate degree in English, the price of muskrat pelts nosedived and he soon realized that trapping wouldn't pay the bills. While trying to figure out how to make it in the outdoor industry, he tagged along with his brother, who was working for the EPA one summer, counting salmon in the Columbia River. During their wanderings trout fishing across Montana, they eventually ended up in Missoula, and Steve discovered that there was a school there. After spending some time in the town, Steve quickly fell in love with the atmosphere, people, and hunting and fishing opportunities in the immediate area. He went down to the school, saw they had a graduate program, not knowing it was one of the top-rated programs in the country. He applied and was accepted, recalling in an interview, I think they let me in as an experiment. While going to school there, he actually was working as a range picker at the university golf course for extra money, and he recalls in an interview about having a nervous breakdown while driving inside the cage getting pelted by golf balls. He later that day quit, rode his bike to his girlfriend's apartment, sat down and typed up the first article he ever sold, this one to a trapping magazine. Ranella then went on to sell his next story to Outside Magazine for a considerable hike in pay. He quickly found success placing articles in Field and & Stream and Outside Magazines, which led to The Scavenger's Guide in 2006, his first book. A mix of travelogue and memoir, the book describes a year-long quest to assemble the ingredients for a 45-course meal based on the recipes in The Guide Culinaire a 1903 cookbook by French chef Auguste Escoffer. Around the time that Ranella's first book came out, he met in New York City with his publicist, a fellow Michigan native named Katie Finch, who he later ended up marrying. After Ranella moved into her apartment around 2006, he finished up his second book called The American Buffalo. It was around this time that TV producers started calling him, and in his first stint as a TV personality, he hosted a show on the travel channel called The Wild Within. That show, however, only lasted one season, as Steve was quoted in an interview one time saying the show tried to shoehorn hunting and fishing into a narrative about something else. Soon after the end of the only season of Wild Within, he started filming and shooting episodes for a brand new show called Meat Eater. This show premiered on the Sportsman Channel in January 2011 and was an instant success. Meat Eater still airs shows to this day on Netflix and has morphed into a media empire with several podcasts, online shows, YouTube channels, publications, and even smaller companies owned by Meat Eater, all under the Meat Eater brand. With his travels all around the world, Steve has hunted and eaten pretty much any species you can imagine. Steve's skills in the kitchen didn't come from some fancy chef school or learning in a five-star restaurant kitchen, though. He actually taught himself how to cook during his trapping days. He became self-educated on indigenous cooking. If it wasn't for hunting and fishing, I would have never became interested in food, that said Ronella in an interview. With every interview he has done, the question always comes up, what is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? His answer is always a laundry list of animals you'd never see in a typical cookbook. Coyote, porcupine, red howler monkey, raccoon, muskrat, beaver, rattlesnake, the list goes on and on, but you guys get the idea. On top of being a TV personality, Steve is also one of the leading voices in the industry for conservation. He often describes himself as an environmentalist with a gun. He sits on the board of the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, 
a nonprofit that lobbies policymakers to put more money towards restoring wetlands, defending the Clean Water Act, and halting the sale of public land. In a society filled with quote-unquote influencers and personalities, Steve is as real as it gets and doesn't hold back when it comes to defending this sport that we all love. I cannot think of a better person for young hunters today to idolize and to be the face of an entire industry.